Hello there, I'm Brett and welcome back to Math Hacks. Today we are learning how to find the exact values by hand of cosecant, secant, and cotangent at a given angle. Today's lesson is a continuation of our last lesson where we learned how to find the exact values of sine, cosine, and tangent by hand. If you need a review of how to do that, I'll leave a link to that tutorial in the description box below so you can catch up. In today's lesson, you're going to learn how you can evaluate cosecant, secant, and cotangent by hand using a very similar technique. In today's lesson, you're going to learn about the reciprocal identities and how we can use them to evaluate those trigonometric functions on the unit circle. Let's get started. Today's lesson is going to look a lot like the last lesson with the addition of a few identities. So the first thing I want to do is go over these reciprocal identities because they're not only crucial for these problems that we're doing today, these are some of the most important identities that you will learn all throughout trigonometry. So the first thing that you need to know is that cosecant, secant, and cotangent are reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. So in order to solve the problems that you're given today, you need to know that the cosecant of x is the same as 1 over sine of x, the secant of x is the same as 1 over cosine x, and the cotangent x is the same as 1 over tangent x. And because we can also write tangent x as sine over cosine, Cotangent x can also be represented as the reciprocal of that. So cotangent is also the same as cosine x over sine x. And throughout today's problem, I'm going to be using this identity where the cotangent of x is equal to cosine x over sine x. I think it's a little bit more straightforward. All right, so these are the reciprocal identities. And we are going to start with our first problem where we are going to evaluate the cosecant of 4 pi over 3. So just like in the last problems that we did, we're going to start by making a miniature axis and locating the revolution that we're evaluating. So in this case, we're going to locate 4 pi over 3. All right, so recalling from our last lesson, when we want to find the angle 4 pi over 3, you can think about how that is the same as 4 thirds pi. Now 4 thirds is larger than 1, so I know that this angle is going to be larger than 1 pi revolution. So that means it's going to be somewhere in the bottom half here. This is the same as 1 and 1 third pi, if I change that to a mixed number. So that means I'll have 1 pi revolution plus 1 third pi revolution. So what I'm going to do is take this bottom half and just go about 1 third of the way. All right, now that I have located 4 pi over 3, remember that is the revolution starting from 0, going all the way here into the third quadrant. Next, I am going to construct a triangle so that way I can find out the distance to get to this point. The next thing that I need is the reference angle. So that's the little tiny angle inside of my triangle. Now because I know that this is one third pi units past pi, then this angle here is pi over 3. And if we remember our quick little memory aid from last time, pi over 3 corresponds to 60 degrees. So this is a 60 degree angle. I'm going to go ahead and draw this triangle a little bit bigger on the side so we can go ahead and figure out the two legs. Next, I'm just going to fill in my proportions for a 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle. I'll divide everything by 2 so that the length of this hypotenuse is 1 and fits nicely into our unit circle. 
And lastly, I'm just going to transcribe these distances now into our coordinate axes. Remember, left and down are both negative directions, so both of these values here are going to get negative signs when I apply them to this triangle. That means that this point right here is at the coordinate negative one half, negative square root three over two. All right, so here is our final step. Now we're going to evaluate the cosecant of four pi over three. So I'm going to go to my reciprocal identities and I see that cosecant is the same as one over sine. So what I want to do here is find the sine value at four pi over three and use that in the denominator of one over sine. Sine of four pi over three is the y coordinate. Remember, cos sine, sine is the y coordinate. So in the denominator, I'm just going to go ahead and write negative square root three over two. When I divide one by negative square root three over two, I get the reciprocal, which is two over negative square root three. Now, because I have a radical in the denominator, the very last step for this problem is to rationalize the denominator by multiplying both the top and bottom by square root of three. And my final answer for this one then is negative two square root three over three. That is the cosecant at four pi over three. Our next problem is to evaluate the secant of seven pi over four. So once again, I'm going to locate the rotation of seven pi over four on my axes, and then we're going to construct the triangle so we can find the point at seven pi over four on the unit circle. So, 7 pi over 4. Remember, when you're working with pi over 4 increments, those are increments of 45 degrees. Remember, 45 degrees is simply half of 90 degrees. So my first 45 degree increment, or pi over 4 increment, is going to be right here. So that's 1 pi over 4. Here is going to be 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, six pi over four, and in quadrant four, I'll find that I have seven pi over four. I'm gonna go ahead and make the triangle. Since I'm working in multiples of pi over four, I know that this reference angle right here is going to be 45 degrees. So I've went ahead and sketched a 45, 45, 90 degree right triangle as my reference. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in its side lengths and then adjust it so that the hypotenuse is one. Once I've done that, I rationalized these two legs so that I get square root two over two as those side lengths, and then the hypotenuse is one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and transfer those back into my diagram and make sure that this length, since it's going in the down direction, is negative. That means that our point here is at square root two over two, negative square root two over two. Now I can go ahead and evaluate the secant of seven pi over four. Now the memory trick that I use to keep straight which reciprocal identity goes with cosecant and which goes with secant is I remember that if you notice up here, see how the cosecant goes with sine and the secant goes with cosine, the C's and the S's always pair up. So it's not that there's C and C, there's a C and an S. So cosecant goes with sine, secant goes with cosine. And of course, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. That one's pretty straightforward. You just have to remember that tangent is sine over cosine. So cotangent would be the opposite of that, which is cosine over sine. That's how I keep them straight. So for secant of seven pi over four, this is the same as one over cosine of seven pi over four. Next, I'll look up cosine of seven pi over four. I've already found my angle and 
described the point as a coordinate. So cosine of 7 pi over 4 is simply square root 2 over 2. And I go ahead and flip and multiply. I'm going to get 2 over square root 2 here. And then, of course, I need to rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and bottom by square root 2s. And when I do that, I'm going to get 2 square root 2 over 2. And the 2s cancel out, which leaves me with just square root 2. For our third problem, we're going to evaluate the cotangent of pi over 6. I'll begin with my diagram. Next, I am going to find the angle of pi over 6. Remember, pi over 6 corresponds to a 30 degree angle. So we're just going to be in quadrant 1 here with a 30 degree angle. We'll construct the triangle. Uh, this triangle is a 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle. Filling in the side lengths. So th since I'm in the first quadrant, everything's going to be positive here. So it's simply square root 3 over 2 on this leg. And the short leg is up 1 half. That means that our point has an x distance of square root 3 over 2 and a y distance of 1 half. Okay, now here comes the fun part. We're going to go ahead and evaluate cotangent of pi over 6. And I am going to use the identity where cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. So that's the x coordinate in my coordinate pair over my y coordinate. Cosine is square root 3 over 2 at pi over 6. And sine is 1 half at pi over 6. Next, I'll flip and multiply. And when I do that, I see that I can cross cancel these 2's. And I end up with simply square root 3. So we're just going to do one more example today. And I wanted to show you this example because we're going to get an undefined solution here. And I just want to show you that that happens. It actually happens a lot with these co-functions, cosecant and secant and cotangent, because they have vertical asymptotes. So that means there's a lot of places where our functions don't exist. One of those places for secant is going to be pi over 2. So I'm going to start my problem exactly as I would any of these other problems. I'm going to sketch my axes and locate pi over 2 revolution on it. So pi over 2 is one of the axes. It is a 90 degree revolution. And so all I need to do here is insert the point that has a distance of 1 from the origin. Remember, because this is a point that would be on the unit circle if we are constructing the entire unit circle. And the unit circle always, always, always has a radius of 1. So I'm going to put a point right here. And this is going to be 1 unit away from the origin, which makes its coordinate point 0, since I'm not going to travel left or right, and 1 up. Now to evaluate secant at pi over 2, I need to remember that secant is the same as 1 over cosine. The next thing I'm going to do is trade out cosine of pi over 2 for its equivalent value, which is always the x-coordinate on our unit circle, and the x-coordinate at pi over 2 is 0. So this becomes 1 over 0. And of course, we can't divide by 0, so that is why secant at pi over 2 is undefined. Thank you so much for joining me and doing a little bit of math today. If you enjoyed today's tutorial and would like to see more tutorials just like this one, let me know by giving this video a big thumbs up. And don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you can find all the math tutorials you want when you need them. Till next time, I'm Brett, and thank you so much for joining me.